Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation. We have log of x minus 2 with base 3 equals log of x with base 5. And we're going to be solving for x values. This is a logarithmic equation, or we can just call it a log equation. But the problem with this problem is maybe the challenge. The bases are different. Because if the bases were the same, of course, this equation wouldn't be solvable. But think of another scenario where we have log of x minus 2. And on the right hand side, let's just say log with the same base. And that is equal to 3x. Something like that, right? So you could... Well, I, I'm going to make it plus 2, okay, to make it work. But if you had the same base... It will be automatically easy, right? Why? Because you could just ignore the bases, ignore the logs to make it more, I guess, rigorous. You can also say, well, 3 to the power log of something and with base 3 is just going to be that thing, which is x. So you would, do three, you would do 3 to the both sides. But to keep a long story short, from here you could conclude that x plus 2 is equal to 3x, which means 2x equals 2, which means x equals 1. And as you can see, x equals 1 is indeed a solution. You can plug it in, and it does work. Okay. Unfortunately, we, do not, we don't have that luxury here. Why? Because the bases are different. What do you do when the bases are different? Well, let's make an attempt to simplify this. There's a formula called change of base with logarithms. How does that work? If you have log b with base a, then you can write this as log b over log a. Now, here this base was not specified, but it could be any base you want. So, we can basically use base x, okay? And x can be anything. And you can kind of write it like this. Most common bases are 10 and e. So, if it's base 10, we don't write the base. So, log b over log a. Log b just means log b with base 10. And in the case of natural logs, you can write this as ln a over ln b. Let's just use the ln for this problem because it's more common. Now, if you apply change of base to the left-hand side and the right-hand side, this is what you're going to get. Easy. ln x minus 2 divided by ln, what was the base on the left? 3. Okay. And on the right-hand side, you're going to get ln x, which is a little simpler, divided by ln 5. Okay, fine, 3 and 5 were different bases, but now they're constant, so it should be easy to solve, right? Well, yeah, wishful thinking, that's what we call this. But let's go ahead and divide by ln x, multiply by ln 3, so that we can put the variables on the same side and constants on the other. Great. This would only be great, though, if you were able to solve an equation like this. Let's just say this is a constant c, right? Okay, let's just call that c. Whenever you have an equation like this, ln x minus 2 divided by ln x equals c, can you solve this equation? Probably, right? How could you solve it? Well, first you can try cross multiplication, ln x minus 2 equals c times ln x. And as you know, properties of logarithms, you can make this a power. So this becomes ln x minus 2 equals ln x to the power c. Beautiful, right? And then... You can just safely say that because now the bases are the same. x minus 2 is supposed to be x to the power c. The problem with this is if you don't know what c is and you do know what c is, how are you going to solve this equation? Because if c is 2, let's just make up some values, then this is quadratic. If c is equal to 3, then it's cubic. You see, for every value of c, and what if c is equal to something like this? You're going to get a really weird equation, aren't you? And this is totally non-standard. How are you going to solve it? Unless you kind of graph it and look at the intersection points, you can numerically solve it. Definitely, right? There are numerical methods. But we're not doing numerical analysis here. We're doing algebra. So how do you solve it algebraically? Answer, you can't. Okay? At least for these particular values. So there's no general way to solve this, in other words, right? Even though, oh, my God. We, we made... So much progress, right? Looks like we made a lot of progress, but unfortunately, we get stuck here. That can happen all the time. So, what does that mean? Well, I can at least try replacing C with whatever it is, right? So, that should give us something like this. ln x minus 2 equals ln x to the power C, which is ln 3 over ln 5. Great. 
Now, at this point, you can just go ahead and ignore the lns and write this as x minus 2 equals x to the power ln 3 divided by ln 5. Again, a very non-standard transcendental equation which you cannot solve synthetically or analytically or algebraically, whatever that's called. Okay, so we kind of got stuck. I mean, can you not guess and check? Sure, but it's not going to be easy either, right? Maybe it is going to be easy, who knows, right? By looking at the denominator intent, you might be able to get away with something, which is going to come up in the second method, by the way. This was the first method. Did I say that? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So now let's talk about the second method, which is usually shorter, more elegant, but again, you get to decide. The first method didn't give us anything. So would you like it? I mean, you can still like it. It doesn't matter. So it does matter, but, you know, uh, it's up to you. That's what I meant. So we have this weird scenario where the bases are different, but all hope is not lost because we can use a super powerful tool that will solve this problem. And you know what it's called? You want to play hangman? Starts with S. And the second letter is U. You got it? Hopefully. It's called substitution. Yay. So here's what we're going to do. Both of these are equal to each other. Right? I mean, they're equal to each other. Two things. So why not set them equal to the same thing? Like maybe T. How about that? I like T. I don't like coffee. I mean, not that much. I don't hate it. Sometimes drink it maybe once or twice a week. I don't know why I'm talking about it. Tea is a variable, not a drink, right? Obviously, it could be a drink too. But anyways, from here, we use properties of logarithms. So take one equation at a time. If this is equal to T, then that means X minus 2 equals 3 to the power 3. Not T to the power 3. Don't get it wrong, okay? Like this. Great. What about the second one? log x with base 5 equals t means 5 to the power t equals x or x equals 5 to the power t. And then again, you might be questioning like, okay, fine, but from a single equation, you got two equations. How is that helpful? Well, if you think about how we solve systems, that'll make it more clear. Hopefully, sometimes you can turn an equation into a system because the system, the solving the system is easier than solving the single equation. Or sometimes you can even use inequalities to solve a problem, which I gave you an example of, right? Remember the problem we did yesterday on this channel? The same one, which is cyber math. Is this cyber math? I, I think so. Because I have another channel called A plus BI, which focuses on complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. All right, so... That's what we did yesterday. We used inequalities. And I also shared a graph with you. If you go ahead and check it out, it's a post, but I also shared the link. So take a look at it because apparently graph from Desmos is much, much better than the graph from Wolfram Alpha. Not that Wolfram Alpha is lousy at graphing, but in this particular case, you can see what is going on, hopefully. If not, go ahead and watch the video. Even if you see what's going on, still watch the video and let me know what you think. Under that post, you can comment. So. What are we trying to do here? Well, I can use elimination or substitution. Substitution is better. Look, x equals something and there's an x here. So why not replace this x with 5 to the power t? What that does is amazing because it basically gives us another equation. But this equation is easy to solve. I'm going to show you. It's just unbelievably easy. Okay, unbelievably easy. Super duper easy. And it's an amazing problem, in my opinion, because I love exponential equations. So... Let's go ahead and put the 5 to the t and 3 to the t on the same side and take a look at this equation. And if that doesn't make sense, take a good look. I don't know if you've seen the movie Stand and Deliver. In that movie, uh, a, an AP Calculus teacher is featured. And, oops, I forgot his name. What a shame, right? Anyways, they made a movie about it. And I got to meet him in person, actually, in Los Angeles. But anyways, that's another story. Oh, yes, I remember. Jaime Escalante. Okay, a guy from, I think, uh, Bolivia. Anyways, he, he was an amazing teacher. And he would always say, like, take a good picture, which means pay attention and see what's going on. So I want you to take a good picture here. Okay, how do you solve it? Well, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. What does that mean? It means that t equals 1 is a solution. But don't be too happy because that doesn't mean it's the only solution. But guess what? We can check it. 
how we can do that is looking at the behavior of this function. Like, is this an increasing function, decreasing function? Well, both of these are increasing functions, so their difference, we don't know what is going to happen. Guess what? We can divide everything by 5 to the power t. And that's just going to make our life so much easier. Take a look at this. It's unbelievable. You do a little thing, and then it's solvable all of a sudden. Crazy, right? 1 minus 3 over 5 to the power t equals 2 over 5 to the t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the right-hand side. 1 equals 3 over 5 to the power t plus 2 over 5 to the t. Of course, you can also write this as 2 times 1 over 5 to the t, if that's going to make your life easier. doesn't matter, no big deal. But the thing is, notice that here the basis are, okay, you know what, I should do that, because I'm, I'm talking about the bases, but 5 is not the base, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. 1 fifth is the base here, does that make sense? So look at the function on the right-hand side, you can call that f of t, right? The bases are less than 1, the bases are between 0 and 1, that's what I meant. And when that happens, as t increases, you're going to realize raise 3 to the fifth to the first power, second power, third power, the number is going to get smaller and smaller, because the denominator is going to grow faster, you're comparing powers of 3 to powers of 5. Am I making sense? Hopefully, I'm not giving you too much info. Some people like it. Some people don't. I don't know what to do. So, this is decreasing function for that reason. And this is another decreasing function because multiplying by 2 doesn't change the nature. So, two decreasing functions added together will make a decreasing function. What does that mean? You have a function that's decreasing and, oops, all of a sudden, it's intersected by horizontal line, which you could call g of t. That means that it can only intersect at a single point. The only solution you found is the only solution. Therefore, t equals 1 is the only solution. But wait a minute. We're not solving for t. Yeah, of course, we know that, right? Come on. We're solving for x, but x equals 5 to the t. So if t is 1, x is equal to 5. Therefore, 5 is the only, only solution. And you can go back and check this, actually. Plug in 5. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. And log 3 with base 3 is 1. Log 5 with base 5 is also 1. They're equal, and that's it. You could graph these and check it out, but you're not always going to get an accurate answer. Desmos will usually tell you the intersection point. You can click on it. But anyways, that's it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye bye.